Hi team, this is Chris Abraham from GoMath. Here to do another problem as part of the Harvard Square Amtel Math Workshop series. Today we're going to do number six on the general curriculum math subtest. Let's take a look at the problem. Use the diagram below to answer the question that follows. They give us a visual diagram here. Looks like a rectangle with sides of four, two inches, that means inches, by four inches. And then it gives us this question. The measurements in the diagram above are shown rounded to the nearest whole number. Which of the following is a possible value of A, the area of the rectangle? And it gives us answer choices. 5.0 square inches, 5.5 square inches, 1.5 square inches, 12.0 square inches. Now there's a lot of clues here that are going to help us solve this problem. What's a clue? A clue is a detail that gives us a, an indication of the math concept that's going to be used. Here's the first one, the visual. When you see a shape like this with dimensions, isn't this a clue that we're going to be dealing with area? I think so, because area, what is area? Length times width. And when we deal with area, we get an answer. When we do length times width, we get an answer in square units. Now, that's another clue. All our answer choices are in square inches. So we're definitely going to be doing some sort of computation that's going to involve length times width. What's another clue? It says area here. Okay. What's something else? Well, there's some key vocabulary here that uh, it's important to pick up because it's going to help us solve this problem. This first one is rounded and then to the nearest whole number. What does that mean? Well, rounded, usually when we think of rounded, we're thinking about values. And if something's rounded to the nearest whole number, by the way, a whole number is a number that um, is, is like um, 1, 2, 3, 4, and it could e even include 0, um, that's divisible by 1 with no remainder. So it says here that these values, the 2 and the 4, are rounded. So they're not really 2 and they're not really 4. If you think about it, what would be a number that would get rounded up to the lowest, smallest possible number that would get rounded up to 2? Let's see, if I'm thinking about the smallest possible number, this whole thing has a length of 2, but if this, was round, uh, this value was rounded to 2, then wouldn't it be fair to say that it could, I could actually have a box, if this measurement here is 2, I could actually have a box that's like 1.5, because 1.5, the 5 would round the 1 up to 2, right? So we could actually have a box that's really this big, goes up to here. And we could have a, a, a length, a length, sorry, a length that goes uh, only up to 5.5. And we could have a width that's less than 4 but gets rounded up to 4, like 3.5. That would get us rounded up to uh, 4. So really, we could have dimensions of a much smaller um, rectangle. It could have been this 1.5 and it could be 3.5 because of both the 1.5 that would get rounded up to the 2 and the 3.5 would get rounded up to 2. So we actually could have something that falls into this category here that's only this big. So let's fill that in. And then there's a flip side to it. What if the measurements were big? I mean like really big. So big um, yeah, that's cool. I'll, I'll keep with that. So big that the value is greater than 2, greater than 2, but we get rounded down to 2, like 2.49. And something that is greater than 4, but would get rounded back down to 4. Like, for example, how if we say, uh, by the way, there's currently this box right here. What if we said 4. Point, I don't know, 49? Well, now we have this really big potential area that this shape could fit into. So the question is asking what is the possible area of this shape? So we have to determine, you know, what the what the area is of the of the smallest shape. I'll do a if this is our spectrum here and we're looking for A as our area, A 
area. We're going to have on the low end, we're going to have a low area and a possible high area. And that's going to be our range. Well, if we think about the low area, the low area is going to be 1.5 times 3.5. And that's going to give us the lowest possible area. So what is 1.5 times 3.5? I know what you're saying. You're like, we really have to do that? Yeah, you do. So you should, you should practice it right now. Don't let me do it. Do it before I do it. 5 times 5 is 5. Carry the 2. 5 times 1 is 5 plus the 2 is a 7. 3 times 5 is what? Ah, oh, darn. Ran out of space. <laughs> Uh, don't you hate it in the math videos when this happens? Uh, can I enlarge this? Come on, enlarge! Now I need you to enlarge. Oh no, that's just going to move my screen over. Ah, uh, Move that over like that, just shift it real quick. Okay, let's go back to that computation. 1.5 times 3.5. Do this real quick. 5 times 5 is 5. Carry the 2. 5 times 1, that's 5, plus the 2 is 7, drop down the 0, 3 times 5 is uh, 15, carry the 1, Th 3 times 1 is 3, plus the 1 is 4, now I add, five to carry the 1, 525, is that possible? No, because i got to remember that I have two decimal spaces here, which is going to shift the answer, the decimal, over two spaces. So the area here is really 5.25. Chris, you're going a little overboard with the colors. Okay, I, I get it. I'll change colors. So that's the smallest. What does that represent? This represents the smallest possible area in the problem. Okay, what would be the maximum area? Well, that would be 4.49. Pardon me, 2.49 times 4.49. Now, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to just approximate it to 2.5 times 4.5. Now, I'm going to multiply it out. Um, all I need to remember is that my answer has got to be lower than this value. So, I do this out. And by the way, I want you to be doing this out. So, don't, don't wait for me to do it. I want you to do it. You should be doing this in your head right now, sort of working this out. You know, don't, don't allow me. If, if you need help, I'll jump in. Okay. 5 times 5 is 25, I carry the 2. 5 times 2 is 10, plus the 2 gets me, gets me the 12. I drop down to 0. Then I do 4 times 5, that gets me 20. Drop down to 0, carry the 2. I'm going to use that 2 from the other one. 4 times 2 is 8, plus the 2 is 10. Now I add up these values. 5, 2, 11.5. Because remember, it's two decimal places. So my value here is a maximum area is 11.25. Now let's go back to the problem. So basically, we have the smallest possible area at 5.25, and the largest maximum possible area of values that we get rounded back down to 2 and 4 at 11.25. Now we go to our answer choices. Is it possible to get an area, a square area of 5? No, it's too small. Too small. And is it possible to get area choices that are 11.5 or 12.5? Remember, our maximum area, and even it has to be less than this, because we approximated, is 11.25. So these are too big. Too big. So the only possible area that would fit into our range is 5.5. Uh, 